So let's talk about the SF90 Stradale. At $700,000, it's the most expensive car I've ever driven, much less had at my disposal for more than two days. I've driven my fair share of pricey cars, but while I was driving around in a car well north of half a million dollars, in a city where the drivers wear their automotive incompetence like a badge of honor, there was a low level of anxiety that I just couldn't shake. To make matters worse, I'm not just driving any old SF90. This is the SF90 Stradale with the Assetto Fiorano pack. To Ferrari, this means the car is more track focused and more aggressive. However, to me, it means there's no front end lift, adding even more to my driving anxieties. Before you finish watching this video, I want to thank today's sponsor, Zydax. Zydax builds awesome gaming PCs and they specialize in customization from custom LEDs, laser etching, and paint. Zydax has a lifetime warranty on parts and labor, and all of Zydax systems are hand built in Salt Lake City, Utah, with US only tech support. So, if you're on the market for your next gaming PC, Hit the Zydax link in the description section. At a thousand horsepower, the SF90 is easily the most powerful car I've ever driven. Because the SF90 is a hybrid, with around 800 of the horsepower coming from the turbocharged engine, another 200 is coming from the three electrical engines. So this means no matter the gear, no matter where I am in the RPM range, if I touch the gas pedal, the power is immediate. There's no lag. It just squirts at the slightest twitch of my right foot. It's speed like I've never felt speed before. So while I'm driving around with this low level of anxiety, I'm also driving around with the utmost level of confidence that wherever I drive, I'm going to be the quickest and fastest thing on four wheels. Considering the obvious attention a car like this gets, when people would follow to take pictures or just admire the car, I was constantly baffled by how quickly I could gap them without using even half of the throttle. This car is so fast, it scares me. The SF90 Stradale is basically Ferrari submitting to the EU's ridiculous emission standards. But it's not the hybrid system that exposes this, it's the interior. I can tell Ferrari said, okay, you want us to go electric? We'll meet you halfway and go kind of electric, but we'll also go completely digital. Everything in the interior of the SF90 is digital, and I mean everything. The center display for the passenger is digital. The entire dashboard is digital. Want to raise and lower the temperature? Digital. Want to start the car? Digital. Want to put the car in hybrid mode? Digital. Want to make phone call? Digital. For crying out loud, even adjusting your side mirrors is digital. And by digital, I mean there's no buttons, just haptic feedback from touching a surface designated for that particular surface. The only things that are analog are the blinkers, oddly the windshield wipers, and the Manitino switch, and the gear selector. But even that is borderline digital. As someone who considers himself a consumer techie, I love it visually, but functionally, the learning curve can be a bit annoying. But the more I drove it, the more natural it all felt, and that's just it. Even though the SF90 is a hybrid with a digital interior that would put the Jetsons to shame, the SF90 still manages to feel analog in the best ways possible. Actually, I think analog is the wrong word. More like it's still beautifully tactile where it matters. When you start the car, it still roars to life like it's purposely trying to piss off your neighbors and get you fined by your HOA. The carbon fiber race seats are unapologetically unforgiving. You feel everything. The paddle shifter's click is so satisfying that you want to drive the car with the paddles all the time. I'll be honest and say, I prefer Ferrari's big front engine V12 GT cars over their mid-engine flying saucer looking variants. But the more I drove the SF90, the more I wanted it. Ferrari doesn't do electronic functionality very well, but damn, they do a good job making everything else about the driving experience so good you don't care. My Apple CarPlay kept disconnecting, and it took me 20 minutes just to learn how to turn the volume up and down, but every time I saw how beautiful the digital dashboard looked and the immediate throttle response along with its beautiful exhaust note, all of the stuff that kind of annoyed me a little didn't matter. As far as the way the SF90 looks, well, I think the Ferrari Pista and the A12 GTS are the best looking modern Ferraris. I don't think the SF90 is the best looking Ferrari or the second, but it looks better than 90% of all other mid-engine supercars with hypercar aspirations on the road today. For me, it's the color. 
If the version I'm driving were black, oh, I'd love it. I know red is the Ferrari thing, but I'm not a fan of red on cars, but the interior to me is stunning. The carbon fiber seats are stunning. The graphics on a digital display are stunning. The exterior is sexy, but not the sexiest Ferrari. But like I said before, everything else about the SF90 makes me not care that it's not the sexiest Ferrari because the way it drives is stunning. I need your help getting this message to spread on YouTube by clicking the thumbs up button, leaving a comment to let me know what you think of the video, then subscribing to the channel. But most importantly, click that bell symbol.